So good morning, good afternoon, good evening again. Uh, welcome again to this uh, webinar, the third episode of Modern Airline Retailing uh, webinar. Um, in this episode, we will be focusing on the transition to 100% offers and orders from an airline IT systems standpoint. Some of the questions we will be trying to answer in this uh, webinar are how airlines are planning this IT transformation to go to a legacy-free environment, how the IT vendors are also preparing for this major redesign of their, of their solution, and what are actually some of the transition pathways to move to this uh, world of legacy-free offers and orders, 200% offers and orders. To talk about that, let me introduce you and welcome uh, to this webinar my four um, distinguished uh, panelists, uh, Antti from Finnair, so welcome Antti, uh, Kartik from uh, Lufthansa Group, welcome Kartik, Hervé from uh, Air France KLM, uh, welcome Hervé, and Oleg, my colleague Oleg uh, from uh, IATA. So welcome all of you. Very pleased to have a strong subject matter expertise to talk about this subject. So now let's get started. So fresh off the press, um, we release uh, at the at IATA um, a white paper uh, for in Chicago, which is called the uh, IT uh, Provider Readiness and Transition Transition Paper. Actually, this will be the uh, the document we'll be trying to explain you during this webinar. This has two parts. One is the IT uh, provider's readiness view from, from the consortium, and then a generic transition pathway, which is more for industry discussion. This is what Oleg and I will be presenting after the first discussion with the airline. We'll have several debates at the end, and we, we expect to have some questions from the audience. Uh, so please type in some of the questions. We'll try to gather some of these key points uh, during, the, during the webinar. Now, just to give you a bit of context on this uh, on this document. So this document is actually um, the work that uh, uh, that has been done by the consortium and by some IT vendors. For those who are not aware, the IATA Consortium for Modern Airline Retailing is a group of 12 airline or airline groups that comes together just to accelerate this journey to 100% offers and orders. Um, and this is actually the third document we are releasing this year. The first document was on the business case to move to offers and orders. The second document is what we call the business reference architecture to the end goal, how the future systems would be designed in terms of business capability. And this has be now is becoming a recommended practices as part of the IATA standard. And the last but not least is this document, which we just released at the World Passenger Symposium in Chicago, and which has been the development by consortium and by some vendors on that. How did we engage the vendors? So we asked each of the vendors to come here in Geneva, in IATA, to present their view of the transition and some of the pathway. They presented in front of the, uh, of the consortium airline, one by one, and together with the consortium airline and us IATA, we consolidated that into a generic pathway that we'll be uh, sharing. And also we get, we're, we're providing some insight on what is the perception at industry level of the readiness of these IT, IT vendors? So let's get now started with um, with uh, with my uh, colleagues from from the airline. So please, Kartik, uh, please come uh, on uh, on the next uh, slide. Um, can you tell us from uh, from a consortium standpoint the work we have been doing this year? How how the perception at industry level from the consortium airline on the maturity of the IT vendors on this transformation and add how do they adhere with the uh, reference architecture that has been developed by the consortium? Hello, everyone. To start with, I would like to give also some context. If you look over the last year, the IT providers and the industry overall have made significant progress in really gaining maturity on this topic. And we have also heard from many providers that the significant amounts of money are being invested towards this topic to develop new solutions. So especially when we look in terms of the IATA business reference architecture, almost all the providers that we discussed as part of this consortium sessions, all of them have committed and are fully aligned with the IATA uh, business reference architecture. 
And also uh, the modularity, which was one of the key points in these discussions, all the providers are also committing to provide modular solutions. So in general, I would say the maturity, not just from the provider perspective, but also from the solutioning perspective is uh, improving step by step, right? I mean, you also see in this diagram, uh, the maturity of the solutions is not yet towards the highest end, but it is also because there are uh, steps being taken, the standards are getting matured. So this is a progress over time. So always looking back, you could see that the progress is getting faster and the maturity is also improving over time. Other than this, uh, I would say the scalability is probably one aspect that we should also talk about. I mean, some of the fears from the past were that many were thinking uh, whether the providers would take existing solutions and then just rebrand them. But this is also something we have found out to be uh, not true. All the providers uh, we have discussed with are also really looking into bringing the solutions, not just modular, but also really based on uh, new technology and also are based on the new offer and order concepts. So also here, we see a, quite a positive development in terms of the overall maturity of the technology, but also in terms of the IT specifics like uh, scalability, the disaster recovery, overall SLAs, we see also much better improvement compared to uh, existing solutions. So in terms of confidence and general trust also, I think this is also a significant change going forward that we see we are in a position where we could really consider going forward in the journey and start implementing solutions one by one. And the last point, maybe also the, the trickier one is the transition timing. Here we see also uh, quite a bit variance, starting from one to two years to seven years and upwards. So you could see that there is a, this is not going to be a simple, simple, let's say, take a product, implement it, and then we are done. This is going to be a transition. It's going to be a journey, and that's it's going to be a bit longer journey than the usual ones. Because this involves not just an IT change, but also a business process change, a change in mindset. And in most cases, I would also say an organizational change. So this is going to be a long journey and we all have to be prepared. Thank you, Kartik. I think we'll come back to the organization change, the mindsets uh, as, par as part of this webinar. But uh, good to be uh, cautiously optimism optimistic that the IT providers are clearly committed. The level of maturity may not be there for all of them, but I think it's, you see the improvement in, in terms of, of, uh, of understanding on, on, on the way to provide different solutions. Thanks for that. So now let's move to um, another aspect of, uh, of, of this transition. And I'd like to invite uh, Hervé to, to come on the screen and to share with us um, you view uh, Air France Calais is also quite committed on this journey. You've been publishing a white paper with, uh, together with uh, Oliver Wyman on that, on the one order transition. But now, really from an industry perspective, um, looking at the end state, what do you wish this kind of old artifact to be replaced? How do you see this transition and transformation to move away from some of this legacy artifact? Yeah. Hi, hi Sebastian. Hi all. Um, yeah, I, as you can see in the screen, uh, basically this is a result of a questionnaire that was sent to the providers. Um, I'm not going to go into detail. Will you'll get some in the paper? But uh, for us, there are several key messages in this one. Uh, the first one is really that uh, there is no uh, artifacts uh, that will remain at the target as we currently know them. So basically, when we mentioned PNRs, EMD, etiquettes, and so on, they would all be uh, either obsolete or transformed. Um, most of them will be actually obsolete, uh, except uh, the revenue integrity and the PNRs in DCH. We need maybe further discussion uh, to get more maturity on the future underlying process that is supporting uh, those, um, those artifacts. 
Um, what we'd like to say as well is uh, we are looking more more here on the on the the tech part, the data and the supporting records. For us, what is important to understand is also getting clarity on the business process that are being supported by those records, which means that um, in this journey, uh, we believe that there are also some opportunity to gain some simplifications in terms of process in terms of underlying supporting systems, and that should be at the, at the very starting point of this uh, transformation journey. Thank you, thank you, Hervé. Sorry, I was on, on mute. Um, thanks for that. So yeah, a key takeaway on that is that uh, the industry and the IT vendors clearly see some of the, let's say, legacy artifacts that have been used by the industry for many, many years uh, moving away. It will take some time. There is some unclarity in the area of the DCS. More clarity would be coming in the, in the next year as, as we're maturing into this uh, development. I think on the revenue integrity, you mentioned uh, the fact that some of the core principle of revenue integrity um, would still be there, checking the names or things like this. But by design, the notion of an integrity between the office and orders should be removed. So that's a critical thing, and that's part of the new uh, workflow in which office and orders will be working on the, on the airline side, as every um, information is controlled within the within the airline side. So yeah, quite some, quite some change. So thanks, Hervé. Now let's move to um, the next slide, which is slightly controversial, but we actually had um, a couple of really asked the, the vendors about that, and especially the current incumbent on the PSS side. Is it the end of the PSS? And I'm very pleased to have Anti, which is actually on this journey together with the major PSS working on, on that space to give us a bit some, some insight on, on, on that front. So Anti, over to you. Uh, thank you, Seb. I, I think this is a very interesting question because the easy answer is yes but uh, of course the reality is much much more complicated so when we think about what what do we mean with the actual pss and really going to the let's say as narrow uh, meaning as possible saying that we have a uh, something in the pss that takes care of the reservations something that takes care of okay, care of our inventory and then of course the dcs being kind of the key uh, functionality to actually guarantee the delivery of, of our products to the customers and if at the same time uh, we are doing the transformation uh, with the offers and orders of course those capabilities then have to be reflected throughout the technology stack and, and then you quite quickly come uh, to these connections where for example your reservations and orders, they are the same thing, they have to be replaced somehow. Is that the module from your PSS that immediately, obviously, will be replaced by something else? <clears throat> Inventory part is, an, is also an interesting question there, because the, typically, uh, as airlines, when we talk about inventory, we talk about seats. But we have many other things, basically, uh, in the offer order transformation that we have to take care of, that we follow those follow the, the inventory like any retailer what are we actually selling how much of that can we can we produce to the customers and i think that's also the uh, kind of an obvious change that we have to have where we have a product catalog and we have an inventory system that supports actually product catalog in the future i think the dcs is the complicated one because there you have to guarantee the delivery of those orders that you have to the customers. And there, because the, when we talk about the DCS part, it's not only, only about how do we work uh, between our partners, carriers, it's the whole airport systems, everything related to that in the ground services, how things are working. And I, I think uh, basically doing the, the whole transformation where everything um, in the PSS would be, let's say, offer order native, if one would use that kind of term, I think that will take a long, long time. We will need quite a lot of translation between orders to PNRs and booking classes to something else. And, and because here also, if you think about us as an industry, and some of those things that, that have been available already for many, many years, let's say, 
branded fairs or fair families or ticket types, however you would call them. Even getting that information to the airport through the DCS, where many carriers didn't have the capability until maybe a few years ago. Everything had to be based on the booking class. And the booking class will become absolutely irrelevant in the future. That information has to be reflected somehow. And I think th this will be really, really the, 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 the interesting part. Well, like I think for us, let's say commercially, what we think about what we produce to the customers, what we offer to the customers, absolutely irrelevant. But then to make the back end process work, I think that delivery part is the really, really, really interesting one and often the most complicated thing to, to fix. Thanks, Antti. I'd like to get the view from um, the two other airlines in, uh, in from from uh, LV and, and from Kartik. Especially, um, you mentioned you started to mention about that Kartik uh, on on the how much of a business transformation versus an IT transformation we could call in the context of the future of the PSS or the PSS transformation. Can you share a bit more on that on that that aspect? Yeah, sure. I mean, I see it more also as a change management topic, right? So. The point is we are not running away from something, but we are on a journey towards this retailing vision. And uh, as we have seen in the previous slide, in this journey, we will transform business processes, we will transform interfaces, data models, and as a result, also IT applications. So if you're doing an IT simplification, like what, what have I said, like this is one of the goals, at some point, you would have to also rethink some of the applications, some of the way we do things. And that's why this is really important to, to think that it's not about an end of something, but it's really about the start of something more nicer and something which adds more value to us. And I, I always say we are an airline and we will continue to be an airline. How we do things will change, but what we are doing, this is still going to be the same. And the most important point of all is that to, to really go through this journey, we need all the experts across all domains and across all the business capabilities that we have, even if they are transformed, we would need all of them to go forward. I think it's a very important things like to have across to break the silo within the organization on that. And it's probably, you probably echo the same thing, Hervé, on it's almost, let's say, a huge internal change management on, on your side in you, when you design the future of, of your platform, isn't it? Yeah, ex ex exactly. And um, for us also here, um, the question is not really, is it the end or not of the PSS? We see the PSS as a uh, core supporting uh, technology heart of our, our whole uh, supporting business. But, but underlying, uh, what we are looking for is really updating the technology is uh, breaking that monolithic so we're looking for some modular components uh, we are also looking at well-designed functions and again really thinking about what are the key main functions that are really designed and optimized in such a way that we're able to retail uh, our current products but which is also future proof for future needs and all put that together, uh, it is less a technical question, a technological question, that a question of underlying processes, uh, the change uh, management for, for our user and our customers. Um, and that's the, really the, the important part for us. Yeah. Thank you. So a large business transformation as important as the IT transformation. So thank you, gentlemen. I think this is actually um, summing up the first part of the webinar. Um, I'll, I'd like to uh, welcome to this webinar Oleg now again that is going to introduce um, what we call a generic pathway or generic roadmap of the transition. So over to you uh, Oleg. Thank you Sebastian and, and thank you all. So yeah in the coming 15 minutes so I will go through generic uh, transition roadmap that we have in the paper. Um, yes, as, as a journey to 100% offers and owners. And let me begin by uh, kind of a little bit of disclaimer, uh, saying that this transition roadmap, it was published and it's also presented today in this webinar. Uh, the main thing for it's presented for the debate and the feedback. So following the, uh, following the webinar, we will have a feedback round with uh, some of you, with, uh, mainly with IT providers, uh, to discuss and detail it and, and, and go into further details. 
and and if you would like to uh, and if you'd like to discuss it with us as well please feel free to reach out to, to us and we will certainly have uh, we will set uh, time aside to discuss and uh, yeah and see how a next iteration of this roadmap might look like and in the following uh, let me try to go through the roadmap itself basically as it stands in the paper uh, and before we can do it so let's have a look of what we are transitioning from so the starting phase and what we are transitioning into so the final state uh, so going uh, from the offer management side um, in the legacy legacy state we have fares we have pricing engine that is based on fares as well as inventory and in the future stage, so this is becoming transformed into product management. So the fares essentially decoding the product definition. So that in the future will be a part of the product catalog. And the prices will be stored or will be computed uh, on the fly by the offer management, as well as products will be constructed, as well as bundles will be constructed on the fly by the offer management. Then on the order side, so we have uh, in the legacy, we have PNR, CMDs and tickets. So these records will be repra replaced by a single record that is an order record. And that will be a central place and central hub to manage all the end-to-end -end processes uh, from the customer and commercial perspective. So that means, for example, for delivery management, that will be uh, changing the DCS. So in the delivery uh, management space, uh, essentially the processes that will stay in that domain will be the physical processes that can happen only at the airport or in other points of delivery. Essentially, when the customer boards the flights or when the customer uh, needs to drop off the bag. But the other processes that can be digitalized, they will be moved to the upstream, to the order management and other parts, uh, parts of the platform. And uh, yeah, in this way, simplifying a uh, customer journey. The last one here is transformation of accounting. So going from revenue accounting, where a lot of computation is done as the afterthought, so after the tickets are issued, uh, instead uh, the accounting and settlement will be based on the order. So all the processes will be based on the order records, which will have, uh, for example, settlement values and and uh, kind of values of the revenue values prorated per service uh, by the offer management recorded in the order and so uh, order-based accounting it will mainly need to uh, provide the posting to the general ledger and will not need to do the proration and and have that logic that currently exists there so that's that's in a nutshell maps the starting point and the end point of the transformation but the key message here it is from IT perspective it's really replacement of the systems so it's not a transition from a PNR to a master PNR or some other record but it's re replacement of the legacy technology by the leg by the new modules that in most cases will be built from scratch Going forward, uh, so together with the consortium airlines, as well as uh, a few vendors that participated in, in, the, uh, in the workshops, uh, we have come up with these uh, generic tr transition phases. Uh, so they are kind of broad and, and overlapping and some airlines will have a different journey along them. Uh, but for, for in many cases, the starting point uh, for, for airlines is that they have largely completed the prerequisites phase. So they have translate, transformed to using the NDC as a standard for the indirect distribution. And they have undertaken certain effort to modernize their digital direct channel. So with many airlines completing that, there are also in the phase one, some airlines who are uh, transforming, transforming their offer management. So they, uh, they are essentially rolling out uh, dynamic and continuous pricing. And there are a few airlines who have, uh, have been doing that. So essentially they are in the phase one, they are focusing on offer, uh, although still using a lot of legacy workarounds at that time. And at this time, some of them are looking to build uh, or, or acquire a new type of order management systems that will be uh, kind of built from scratch. So after this phase one, there is a phase two where they will focus on implementing and getting the order live uh, to the customer. And at the same time, when there is enough of functionality built in and is live in the order management, they can continue enhancing the offer so they could roll out more new products, uh, more of the new products, dynamic bundling, and so on, and so on. So roughly, these are the first three phases with the main emphasis for phase one and two. 
and uh, once um, enough of the traffic will be in these modern channels and connected to this new type of uh, systems to the new platforms they might proceed as far as to decommission the legacy uh, systems including the pss so this is in the phase three but at the same time, to, to be able to do that, they will need to talk in some way to their uh, partner airlines, to their interline partners, uh, many of, the, of whom still will be using uh, legacy technology in their part. So uh, they will be using PNRs and PSS and tickets to enable their, uh, their IT, IT stack. So for that, in order to this modern airline to interact with the legacy airline, uh, we are introducing here the concept of this legacy interline translation services that will enable essentially interaction of these new and, on, and old uh, technologies. And with that, with that technology or that module in place, airlines would be able uh, to decommission the PSS for their, uh, and just keep using the uh, offer and order management that is fully modernized um uh, from um yeah on their um on their prime channels so on their modern channels that that where they are in control of the of order and offer and i'm sure we'll hear more on this from our speaker speakers and the panelists but let me just highlight another aspect here so of course that during the transition there needs to be an integration services that will enable data synchronization between the pss and the order management uh, so this is shown here in gray and just to make it really clear is the difference so this one that we call the integration services it's some uh, it's some layer that will sit in between the PSS and the legacy technology and the new one. And then the translation services is something that enables the modern airline to talk to their legacy partners. So at this point, let me, tell, uh, let me turn to Sebastian again and ask if it's roughly uh, makes sense to you. So uh, yeah, is there some it's, it's, main takeaways for you from here? It, it, it does not only make sense to me, but it makes sense from some of many of the IT provider that was interviewed during the uh, during this uh, session this year. And this was the common theme that came. Essentially, the airlines needs two things really like robust is one is this integration services to enable the synchronization between the old and the new world on both sides, and then a translation services to legacy uh, artifact or partners or channel that will enable this uh, this transformation. So that's that's what really we heard as a common theme from the airlines and the IT vendors, and that's why it's a generic transition phase. But uh, let me turn back to you, Oleg. But do you think that uh, that could be done in a, at a big bang? Maybe at a let's say new airline, a startup airline that could work at a big bang. But is it realistic to do that at the big bang as an option? Yeah, very good question. So let me try to cover it on the next on the next slide here. Uh, so essentially the airlines that we've, we've heard from as well as IT providers, so none of them were in favor of the Big Bang and all of them were of the view that it will take a time and it will be a gradual process uh, for their existing customers and as well as for the new customers, so for the new airlines as well. Uh, so in this slide, so what, what we see uh, is that the transition to a new module is broken down into three steps. So we can think in this example that is a transformation from or a change from an inventory system to a new type of simplified stock keeper, or it is a transformation from a PNR and tickets to a new order management. So the first step will be to start this uh, new type of module, new system in so-called shadow or storage only mode. So in that, uh, in that moment, the system will not be connected to external world. It will not be connected to the customers, uh, to the customers, but it will be synchronizing all the data, let's say from PSS. And then that system will be gradually connected to more and more systems uh, inside airline infrastructure, uh, in, Kind of more upstream systems and more downstream systems and more of the use cases uh, the airline will be will be able to handle from that new module enabling for example new or automated servicing uh, possibilities and at some point uh, when there will be a critical mass of transactions the that system will essentially become a master for that airline and the old records of pnrs and tickets will not be a master anymore 
And at some point, airlines will also succeed to move all of their prime offering uh, to, to be handled from this new platform. So by prime offering here, we mean all their own flights, so flights operated by the airline and uh, well in the legacy language as well as marketed by that airline and all the existing, uh, all their existing ancillary products uh, will be also handled from that new platform. So when, when, that, when that is uh, ready, so the airline could go as far as to decommission the legacy module, so basically switch off that part of the module of the PSS, uh, if they are able to handle the interlining traffic through uh, through some other way. So in this example, we are we are suggesting this translation services. So through the translation uh, capability uh, layer, the the airline, this uh, modern airline, will get connected and and will talk to the uh, legacy airlines, their PSS systems, as well as to the GDS, a de facto channel to enable sales of the interline itinerary. And uh, and in the end, as the last step, so also when all the the partner airlines of the airline in question will move to the new environment, uh, the trans translation services will not be needed, and then the new module is fully uh, is fully becoming a master on this scope. So that's in a nutshell really a transition which uh, yeah which can last for quite significant amount of time. But on the other hand, we understand that airlines would like to minimize the duration of transition. So with that, maybe I turn back again to you, Sebastian. So it's, we could clearly hear that it's a gradual transition that could de-risk de some of the uh, some of the risk for, for for this transition. We'll hear a bit in a moment from the airline if it's better to start with offers and orders. Let's let's stay tuned on that. But let's let's carry on actually uh, relatively briefly in going into offers, order, uh, channel migration, and interline migration. What is actually the core value proposition on each of these different uh, roadmap, and what is actually could be decommissioned at what stage in that? So over back to you, uh, Oleg. Thanks again. Okay, so let's move forward and go quickly through the uh, four roadmaps of the four slides on the offer and order management, as well as channels and interlining. So here we are looking at the transition of the offer management, and I'm not going to go through this in detail, but rather I'll refer you to the paper to, to go through it, and this, this, uh, these slides reflect exactly the content of the papers. But what I will do, I will just highlight the key value proposition that is created by transition to the legacy-free offer management. And here you can look on that slide kind of in diagonal way, so uh, top to bottom, left to right. So the first step is the dynamic pricing, whether it will be based on rules or a bit more modern one that is based on science for any products, for auxiliaries, for air. So that is a step that will bring significant revenue, uh, in extra revenue to airlines, significant extra revenue generating capabilities to the airline and ability to kind of build on willingness to pay optimization. Uh, the second step is um, implementing, well, building and implementing a modern product catalog, uh, perhaps first for ancillaries and then for airfares. And with that, uh, and with that, airline will be able at some point to launch completely new products uh, or existing products with the new, uh, with the new innovating twists to them, uh, and realize an extra value, so provide uh, new uh, re revenue streams to to their business. And the third step, that's dynamic pricing science step, or we call it in the past dynamic bundling. So this is the step where, where airlines could realize even more value by, by, by bringing more dynamicity to, to their product offering and optimizing what is offered uh, to the customers at uh, different segments. So that roughly summarizes the key value creation items from the offer side. And here, let me just point out as well the black uh, squares, so the one that uh, that describe the decommissioning or, or sunset of the legacy capabilities. So once airlines uh, start using dynamically created prices, as well as the product catalog for airfares, they no longer need to uh, use the fares uh, as we know them today to be a source of pricing point, so they could sunset that. And at the point when the airlines will uh, implement uh, a modern and simplified stock keeping uh, capability, they could sunset their PSS-based inventory. 
going forward quickly to the order management. Uh, so here we have a similar type of diagram and I will uh, just highlight again the value creation uh, mechanisms at, uh, that are displayed here at the top. So the main one from the order perspective is actually enabling all the offer management uh, type of capabilities that we have seen on the previous slide, as well as enabling end-to-end -end processes. So with enabling end-to-end -end processes, it's meant also that revenue accounting will be based on the, or, uh, on the order, which is described here on, in the middle row, uh, as well as that delivery um, that will be transformed and will be used uh, more of the order records, so the single records from the order management system. So essentially, uh, this bit will enable uh, move uh, not just to more modern order management, but as well to the offer management and enable sales of the new innovative products as well as bundles. And what is very difficult today is to enable sales of interlining um, and interline ancillaries as well as intermodal. And the second aspect that uh, modern order management will bring is uh, is is about um, optimizing. It's, it's improving customer life basically, so improve, improving customer experience. So it's about uh, having a next generation servicing capabilities, self service and automation, as well as more proactive disruption handling. And from the uh, viewpoint of decommissioning the legacy capabilities, so what we conceive, conceivably see is that the first could be decommission the EMDs and tickets on the prime offering. And when uh, yeah, when all, all the prime lights and auxiliaries are handled from the modern system, that could that could also happen for the for the EMDs and tickets in the interlining scope. The next will go transformation of revenue accounting and perhaps the commissioning of it. Uh, then after that, number three will be the commissioning of reservations and NPNRs as we know them. And that will be really a major step uh, for a few airlines. And the last mile that was mentioned briefly as well by our speakers will be some set of the legacy DCS, so above the wing part of the delivery systems. Uh, which only will be possible when the new generation of delivery systems will be out. Um, and finally, going very quickly uh, from the from the channel perspective, so here uh, the main part, uh, the main um, the main step for a few airlines will be in the phase three, and that will be to sunset the legacy G GDS channel for the artifact workflows. So when uh, when enough of the volumes and the critical mass of the technology are taking place from the new systems, the alliance will take that step and move fully to the NDC and .com based uh, distribution and sales. And at some point, well, also when interlining will be taking place from the new systems, that can happen as well in the interlining scope. And going to the last one that we have here, so on the partnerships or on interlining, so with the introduction of a modern uh, order management as well as software management, Alliance will first succeed to release an extra value from auxiliary cross-sell to sell uh, seats and meals and another type of products on their partner airlines. And then in the step two, in the dark blue box, we have uh, creating new partnerships. So for example, low cost and full service carriers, as well as intermodal, so bringing tra trains into the picture, as well as other type of transformation. And the journey will continue in the phase three with enabling all the capabilities um, that are uh, bringing up by the offer and order management. So that was quite quick run through uh, these transition uh, roadmaps and I'm sure you will find more details in the paper and as I said we will reach out for more conversation with some of you to give uh, to get more meat on the bones when it comes to the next step. So with Thank that you. let me turn back to you for, for, the, for the insight and the, the presentation and I look forward to having more uh, feedback at industry level. So let me um, invite back uh, our three uh, other panelists uh, for the final round of, of questions um, and um, I think if um, let's go back to the slide that Oleg presented just before on the generic transition uh, phases um, and, and I'd like to ask um, let's say the critical question we had and we had actually a debate within the consortium and there's still the jury is still out do you start first with Pure offers, pure orders. What is the advantage, disadvantage? You have presented new offers thanks to a lot of 
workaround, which give you quick returns, and, but you are stuck with some of these new offers because you don't have orders. So maybe uh, maybe Kartik, from uh, from from your point of view, what's 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 the best way just to handle this question, starting first with offers and orders? But the key point is there is no wrong way to do it. Because if you look at a modular architecture, it doesn't matter which module you start first. So there are the decision can be based on multiple dimensions. I mean, I give you a simple example. If some airline would say, okay, we are we have to renew our order accounting capability, and we are looking to find a solution, look for someone who can already offer order accounting together. That could be a place to start. But when I look at Lufthansa Group, uh, uh, our revenue management team have already done like really an amazing job in working in the offer space and also in creating advanced offer capabilities around continuous pricing and increasingly as we go towards much more sophisticated offer we come close to a point where it is getting more and more difficult to retrofit these ideas into the pss because in the end you still need to service them you still need a way to deliver them so you have to always, you can sell really much more fancier things today, but in the end, if you have to really service and deliver, you have to find a better way to also cater for them. That's why also from a Lufthansa Group perspective, we decided to start with the modules, product catalog, stock keeper, and order management. And we will also follow closely with order accounting next. We have one question about stock keeper and, and, and product margin. We'll come back to that at the end. So uh, stay, stay tuned with that. Um, Elvi, on your side, did it, uh, Bob, where did you start your modernization? You probably asked the same question internally. So what's your view on that? Well, we, we, we are actually doing both. Um, but um, overall, for a transition, uh, what we think is that it will be a long road, a very critical path as well. Uh, we do believe that there's no single transition path. Uh, this is why we also put a lot of focus on the modularity of the modules uh, that we mentioned earlier, because that would allow us to introduce incrementally uh, all the new modules that we've mentioned and also increase their footprints in our landscape uh, progressively. So uh, modularity is also key and already key in the transition step. Uh, to ensure um, a, um, a smooth uh, transition. What is also important, as we see, is uh, what Oleg mentioned around the translation layer. We would need to handle the, the, the old world and new world seamlessly um, with some um, translation tools or layer for different purposes, for, to convert back to the legacy PNR tickets, to handle interlines, to bridge the uh, compatibility to DCS. So we really need um, those tools and more maturity also on those translation layer in order for us to increase our confidence on the transition and also have more concrete detailed scenario uh, based on our uh, own strategy. Thank you, Hervé. And, and uh, you, and Anthony, what's, um, what's, what's your view on this? Uh, Starting first, starting with offers and orders, starting on both sides, what's your take on that? So our approach has been to do kind of to start with both, but really focus on the offer side of the things. And this is because uh, for me, this is all about money. And if you get your airfares and flight related ancillaries right, that's for many carriers 100% of your revenue. So getting those things fixed gives you time basically to work on the back end. Of course, it leads to a little bit of double work because you first have to do something where you basically get, let's say, the surface of the offers correct. But it has to work with PNRs and tickets. And then you are building on the background your order capabilities, and then you have to match them again. And that's, of course, the challenging part because what you do now in the offers, if, if they have to work with the tickets and PNRs, they still have to be somehow future proof. And how deep you go on the future proofness, if that is a word, I think that that is really the decision point. How how much do you want to invest on that? But but I think it's a it's a bit of a parallel. But but at least for me, I need to be able to show the value 
and that value I can show from the offer side. And, and th this is all, also has been my story internally that we first start with the offers, then we open the hood, we fix the engine, and then there will be the next batch basically of, of, of increased profitability coming after those things have been done. But to show something that this actually works, this makes sense. That, that's why for me it's, it's critical to get get that offer part right, get the continuous pricing out, get your machine learning models for your ancillaries out, get all those things done as well as you can and as much as it makes sense while you know that you are doing the order work on the background. Thank you. It was, it was really a different perspective and very complementary perspective from, from the three airlines here. Thank you for that because it's, it's really like the core debate and, and glad to hear that in any case you need to start to thinking in parallel and that's why you have this footnote at the bottom which has been very much part of the discussion we had this year with the airline of the consortium. So yeah, no, it's really reflect the, the discussion we had this year. Um, now let's focus focus on the other part, which is the, uh, let's say, the real core integration and translation layers to enable this transformation. So um, why exactly, maybe with you, Karthik, why exactly the, this PSS integration and legacy translation layer is required during the transition, how you, you plan to have it on, on your side? I mean, most important is that, uh, like same what Ante mentioned, uh, you have to focus on fast value creation. And on business continuity would be one of the key factors. When you're building something new and if you always have to retrofit things, you have to make sure that the legacy is not slowly creeping into the new world. So you have to keep the new world legacy free. And it's not just about one application, right? We have an entire uh, ecosystem which is dependent on PSS today. You have interfaces which are transmitting PNRs today. So how do you cope up with this entire ecosystem? So for all of these uh, reasons, you need a translation layer or a transition layer, which is then keeping these two worlds separately. So you build something which is hopefully for a shorter period of time existing. It helps you achieve your uh, listed goals. And once you are in the new world, you can decommission also the adapters in addition to the PSS. So, I mean, this will be something I would be happy to say end of transition adapters would also be a goal when we are in the new world. Yeah, and, and, and I think you mentioned the fact that everybody wants to have this transition as short as possible. So maybe, Anti, you are quite advanced in this process with your, with your vendors and you had commitment at industry level to, be, uh, to, to move forward. Um, how are you planning that and how can you probably reduce this transition time with, uh, with this kind of legacy translation? Uh, maybe, maybe just get to back to what Karthik said. I think this was a really critical point that he mentioned on the business continuity. I, I think this is really the critical part here, what we are doing. So there cannot be any, no, nothing can stop. We, we have to be running while we do this and, and this is really the, why things have to talk to each other at the same time. It cannot be anything that anchors us to the past, but, but it has to be fluent, it has to be seamless whenever we move forward with this one. And I think that is the big challenge. And then also for us, that, that is the part how, how, how we are now building this, building this uh, together with uh, Armadale is really that we, we basically have two parallel worlds living at the same time together. So, so we are building the order uh, order management, the, the order layer basically there on the background that is essentially like we talk about systems being shadow mode. So, so it will be something that will reflect the reality. It will be connected to the to the offers, but the, the classic PSS PNRs will be the master still, still for quite a long time until then we uh, think that we are in that stage that that seamless switch when basically the, the, the shadow order system becomes the master can be done. And then again, it flips then the other way around, you will have your PNRs, which will go through the DSS, which will, DCS, sorry, and which will go through the rest of the PSS. But that, the capability has to be, be built so far with the shadow order system, so that that, that transition is, is smooth and the business continuity is guaranteed. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. And and just to 
close the debate on this uh, on this translation layers like Hervé, you mentioned that the modernity in translation transformation and the transition is quite important. But do you think that there is any way at industry level to work together on kind of supporting tool or process or or direction to uh, either to reduce this transition time? Any any view on that? I, I, I um, hope so. I really hope so <laughs> that we would have uh, really uh, brains there to build up some very very smart tools. Uh, translation layers that we can use. Uh, for, for us, we really see those those translation layers as important in order to even start a proper transition. So we are currently in the mix of uh, both legacy and new, uh, new records, new process because of NDC. And we need to have more to examples of uh, running um, products around this those translation layers need to be designed really in such a way that they can support a long transition they would be also very critical components though so the design of those translation is is key is even even, even more important than the target uh, modules um so again really really looking forward uh concrete examples showcase of this and contributing with other airlines and and tech providers on this really important topic Absolutely. This is actually going to be one of the critical things we expect in 2024 at industry level. Yeah. So let's move to the uh, last uh, one final question for each of you, which is more focusing on this, uh, let's say, the organization challenge and opportunity. And in general, this slide is basically showing that there is large numbers of challenges, especially on the organization change, on mindset change, but also huge opportunity in terms of simplification of the process. We mentioned about that and leveraging new technology. But maybe starting with you, uh, Antti, uh, in, in your role of, uh, of uh, SVP network and web management, how your organization, you're planning your organization to cope with this world of 100% offers and others? And if you could be a bit brief in your answer, because I'd like to take one or two questions from, from the chat. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll be quick. But maybe the uh, starting point, point really is that you have to have that business need, that that business need has to be created beforehand. We started taking those steps already years ago. So we have been creating in the organization the need for change already for years before the technology has existed. So then it's obvious basically to get the technology into the processes. But of course, they, some of the changes are, are more superficial or let's say easier in that sense. What happens with your revenue management team when you don't need like this classical type of fair filing pricing type of roles anymore because everything goes through your continuous pricing system and, and you are more people looking at the market and and uh, ancillaries and fair types and all this stuff. So the focus will change quite a lot on that side of the thing. I, I think the other challenging part is, of course, there are also the order and the NDC side of the thing. What happens with your revenue integrity? Uh, are revenue protection type of problems? Do they exist in the future when you have control of your orders? Maybe NDC limits basically certain cases where you typically need that type of work. But I think there will be I, I don't see this at least at, at, at no point it will reduce the roles, but there will be quite a big change and maybe the, 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 the quite a big difference in the responsibilities that are included in the classical airline roles. Because if you think about this, because many of the commercial setups that airlines have, they are not based on business problem, they are based on the systems that we are using. And I, I think that's the, the as wrong as it can be, as it has been currently designed in most of the carriers. Thanks. I'll I'll take actually one, one for, for you, Kathy, one th question from from uh, from the crowd actually, which were typing. Can you share what would be a, an immediate next step to embark in this journey to hundred percent offers and orders from from your point of view? I mean, we have set up an internal program. Uh, it's called Core because we are changing the core processes and applications within the group. So we are doing this for all the airlines uh, in Lufthansa group. And currently we are evaluating uh, the order management uh, solution. And then we are looking to find the provider that we are going to work with. Thanks. And, and you, Hervé, uh... Why is it the right time now to start this journey? 
um, well, we have we have been working on uh, on, on formalizing our business case uh, the last month. Uh, now we feel it's the right time to start for for different reasons. I would say the um, the most important one or the following. Um, we would like to uh, start building now our innovations on the new things instead of continuing the buildings and workarounds and uh, other specific ad hoc developments uh, that are needed for our innovations. Um, but uh, those workarounds that are still needed to compensate the legacy. Uh, we also think that um, by starting earlier, uh, we would have better choice and better deals with uh, IT providers. And also, I guess it's an exciting moment to join also the dynamic that is uh, being being formed now with a lot of discussions, a lot of of um, of uh, interesting uh, designs that are coming from both uh, the providers and the airlines, and we feel it's a good moment to also go into more uh, detail, have a close look on what is de being designed, having in-depth discussion, and also make sure that uh, it also fits our own strategy. Thank you. Thank you. We are almost uh, to the end of this webinar. We we got a few questions around the theme, theme uh, and, and probably I'll ask Oleg to answer this one. Is like how generic are these uh, transition pathway and uh, how would uh, would it differ from one airline to another? We had this kind of uh, discussion in the consortium. So uh, having done the synthesis, can you can you share a few things on on that? Sure, gladly. So they, we call them uh, generic uh, transition pathways because they don't meant to be prescriptive. So that's the first point. So they are really uh, out there for discussion and also to be, as I would say, a menu of different items that airlines and vendors could pick and choose and simply consider what, what kind of steps they would want to take uh, along the journey. So uh, if, if, you, if you need specific capability, probably the steps will be the same of going from shadow to master, but at the same time, it will depend largely on airline as to which business domain uh, to transform first from their internal business consideration and needs. And then I would add to that is that it will also depend a lot on the maturity on the airlines and kind of maturity of the of the solution providers and solutions out there uh, as to how quickly it can be implemented and and you know when what the steps uh, will be taken. So we could foresee, like jumping a little bit ahead, that once there will be a few providers fully ready with all the offer order product management stack, then this transformation might be a lot quicker and, and while it still be gradual, it, it could take less time. But at this point, um, yeah, as discussed, there will probably be a few phases that will differ by the airline size and maturity significantly. Thank you, Oleg. I have one or two very brief questions to ask. One is, and maybe you answer very quickly, what is the difference between stockkeeper and product management? Maybe to you, Kartik, because you mentioned that at one point. I mean, products will be like the most basic entity in the new world. So without products, you neither create offer and uh, neither create an order. So order has a reference to a product, so you need a catalog of products. So that's why we have product catalog. Stockkeeper, primarily the reason that we want to be uh, away from inventory and enable like new selling of ancillaries without a corresponding EMD. So it's really fast value creation. Thank you. And um, short example of what are different, we talk about modules, maybe to you, Hervé, can you give us example of, of what is expected in terms of modularity or what type of modules, just example of modules. I think you're on mute, Hervé. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I think those modules were highly described in, term, in the business reference architecture. So, and there is uh, also large consensus here on the key pillars, I would say, offer management, order management. Uh, then there's the question on how we go into each of those bots and then um, being able to identify smaller modules. Uh, I think the, the idea is that uh, for your modularity, uh, being also able to discuss on the interfaces between those modules and making sure that uh, the concerns are separated, but at the same time, the workflow is ensured between the different modules uh, to support the overall process. 
Thank you. There are two questions actually, which one is related to the future of revenue management that will deserve a speci specific episode. And maybe Antti, we will invite you again on that and, and many of you. And another question, which is what about the future of interlining in this world of offers and others? Obviously, we won't have time to uh, answer this question. We have a, a couple of others. Thank you very much for sharing your, your, your question. So, and, um, and thanks a lot for all of you for participating. Um, the, uh, please uh, stay tuned with future uh, type of, of uh, similar type of webinar from IATA side on modern and live retailing. You have the QR code of uh, the white paper that was released last uh, two weeks ago in, in WPS in Chicago. It's a very interesting resource to study and we look forward to getting more uh, discussion and also the vendors to start to present on, 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 that, uh, on that aspect. And um, just to finish up, a big thank you to uh, the, uh, the four participants that uh, spent time, Antti, uh, Kartik, Hervé and Oleg, for taking the time to be on, on this webinar and for the great insight we got today. So thanks a lot and have a great, great rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.